Live from New York City, it's The Cube. Here is your host, Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back. I'm Jeff Frick. We are here at the Cube's fifth birthday party at Big Data NYC in Manhattan. It's part of the Big Data Week. It's got Stratacomp, Hadoop World, and of course Big Data NYC. So now we're having our party, which is always good to have. And I'm joined here by my next guest, Gary McFadden from Parity Research. Gary, welcome. Well, thank you very much. So last last we saw you was actually at Big Data NYC 2013. So what's a lot's changed in a year. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, the uh, the whole Hadoop thing is uh, really taken off, and uh, the thing that interests me the most about the show or, or the exhibitors at the show is that uh, you can get a lot of data into Hadoop, but how do you get it out? How do you make it useful? Uh, what do you do with it when you get it out? Um, you know, uh, is it unstructured data? Is it structured data? Is it a combination? Is it schemaless? All the above, uh, right? All the above, right, exactly. So I think really that's been, uh, and, and actually I've been Jeff to all the shows, right, since the beginning when it was uh, just Hadoop World, okay. when uh, the Cube started back in, I think, 2010 or 2011, well, Yeah, it's our, right? fifth, our fifth birthday, right, so at least, right. Uh, at, least, at least 2010. So since then, you've seen a, you know, a progression of, uh, of vendors coming in to provide services that actually enable Hadoop to do more than it does. So Hadoop started as kind of a batch-oriented type of uh, uh, solution that now uh, because of these other uh, value-added solutions can do real or near real-time uh, processing. You can uh, take the data out of it a lot more easily. You can use Hadoop basically as a uh, as a repository. Right. Uh, and uh, and and a lot of the uh, the solutions out there are uh, are evolving to the point where uh, you can uh, you can basically make sense of the information, and I think that's really the important Right, point. right. It's dated information, information to insight, right? I mean, that's where we want to go with this thing. And then actionable business go. decisions made right. in real time, which we define as in time to do something about it, right? Right. Yeah, so some of the players, I mean, you've got the, the, the Map Bar guys, you've got the uh, Acteon folks that uh, just bought um, uh, Pervasive Software, so they've got the predictive analytics piece uh, sort of covered. Uh, obviously, that's uh, Stonebreaker's old company, uh, uh, you know, a variant of Ingress. Uh, right. You've got, uh, obviously, IBM as a player in this space uh, with their, uh, their Blue Mix and their cloud capabilities and all of their information management pieces. Uh, every major vendor is got a piece of, uh, is, is part of the action, if you will, yeah. uh, trying to build something on top of Hadoop to make it more useful right. and make it more valuable. Yeah, the floor was filled with little companies, big companies, and everyone is certainly jumping in. So, let me get your perspective since you've been coming for a lot of years on this thing. Where are we on the journey? How, how you know, I think we're past the POC stage, right? People are getting stuff into production deployments, but is it still early days? You know, the Giants are playing tonight, go Giants, are we... First inning, third inning, seventh inning, where are we? <laughs> I think we're probably uh, in the second or third inning. Second I mean, or uh, third. I think we got a ways to go. Uh, and what's the next big hurdle to get us to the next inning? Well, I think one of the problems is the storage issue, right? So you've got this issue of being able to scale out uh, theoretically exponentially, right? Uh, the nice thing about Hadoop is if you need uh, if you need more space, you just add nodes, you add storage and whatnot. But what happens when you get too much information? You're into the petabyte, multiple petabyte range now. And most of that data, you know, you're not going to access. You may access only 2% of it over time. I think there are a lot of figures around that. But actually, a Wikibon article that I read recently is very interesting, one called Flape. Um, Flape. Or, yeah, Flape. Say it one more time, Flape. <laughs> I just want to make sure everybody gets that flape. I hadn't heard it right, until flape. Gary said it to me uh, off camera. Right, it's uh, F-L-A-P-E. It's a combination of flash and tape. And basically there's a great article on the Wikibon site by uh, uh, Wikibon's uh, CTO, uh, David, David, David Floyer. Floyer. Okay. And his premise is that at some point 
relatively soon uh, as the as data grows exponentially into the multiple petabyte ranges and maybe even beyond, the thing that's going to get squeezed is the traditional HDD or right, hard spinning disk, disk right? spinning disk, right? So tape has become much more uh, uh, much more resilient. Uh, tape uh, lasts, has a uh, mean time to failure of about 26 or 30 years versus disk, which is about five. And obviously flash is much, much faster. Right. Right. In, in some cases, uh, I don't want to get into all the nuances yeah, of all the feeds feeds. and feeds, but, it, but, 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 but flash, flash is going to squeeze out discs in the middle. I think so, and, and what that will offer customers is a, is a much lower TCO for managing those huge petabyte scale uh, environments and also accessing it at a relatively uh, quick speed. So I think that's, that's a piece that's interesting. I, the other part that's very interesting to me is the cognitive computing piece. So uh, I was at the, uh, the NoSQL event last week, uh, last month in, uh, in uh, San Jose, and with that they had a cognitive computing component, and I think the idea of trying to get machines to think more like people. Building neuromorphic chips to to, uh, to to kind of mimic the way synapses or electricity in the brain uh, you know works. Right, uh, right. How neurons fire and so forth is very interesting. And I think once you can get Hadoop is the repository. You've got the data there, but how do you make use of it? And I think that's the challenge that's going to be uh, real paramount the next few years. Exciting days ahead. Well, Gary, thanks for taking a few minutes. Uh, we're at the fifth birthday party at theCUBE. We're at Big Data NYC. I'm Jeff Frick. We're on the ground. Thanks for watching.